please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. Well, Facebook-owned messaging platform WhatsApp has rolled out its payments feature. The popular messaging app now lets users in India send and receive money via UPI. However, this move has kicked up a storm in the payment space. Incumbent Paytm has accused WhatsApp of killing India's beautiful open UPI system. Paytm founder Vijay Shekhar Sharma tweeted, and I quote, after failing to win the war against India's open internet with cheap tricks of free basics, Facebook is again in play, killing beautiful open UPI system with its custom closed garden implementation. I'm surprised that the champions of open India stack let it happen, end of quote. However, other companies like MobiQuick have a different take on the issue. The company's CEO Bipin Preet Singh has tweeted, and I quote again, those complaining about WhatsApp are the same folks who refuse to entertain neutral payment options like MobiQuick on their own e-commerce websites and apps and instead promote only captive wallets, end of quote. What is the exact controversy? Megha joins us now uh, to keep it simple with this explainer. Megha, over to you. WhatsApp Pay, this new payment feature by the largest messenger service in India, has ruffled a few feathers, notably that of Paytm boss Vijay Shekhar Sharma. And here's his grouse. WhatsApp has made UPI into a closed or a wall payments garden in India. Why is that being said? Well, as of now, the app does not allow transactions to non-WhatsApp UPI handles, UPI handles created via other apps and it does not include UPI features like QR code scanning and so far all players using UPI have had to comply with these norms and therefore the big question this camp is asking are why does WhatsApp get preferential access to UPI bypassing some of these norms to create a simpler onboarding process for consumers like you and I and when it's compared to other apps. This camp is also questioning if NPCI has carved out loopholes, therefore making it easier for Facebook to launch this service on WhatsApp. Also, does this compromise on the fundamental promise of UPI, which was interoperability? Speaking of interoperability, here's a rebuttal by those who believe UPI was actually never intended to be an open platform. Here's their argument. UPI never included wallets because NPCI believed that banks needed time to catch up with digital payment startups. WhatsApp's way of using UPI will let millions of customers jump onto UPI, which was always NPCI's big mission. Keep in mind that WhatsApp currently has over 200 million monthly active users in India. This camp goes on further to say that there is nothing stopping NPCI from actually expanding this onboarding process, which is a simpler one, to other apps out there. So these are the two camps on WhatsApp Pay, which leaves us with a few concerns. Will this in any way dampen the growth of startups in the peer-to-peer -peer payment space? Is this a reminiscence of Facebook's internet.org that clearly violated net neutrality? Also, with global tech giants getting access to UPI, two companies like Google and Facebook get a leg up in capturing a larger piece of the Indi internet first users in India. Let's now go across to the man who has stirred up this uh, controversy. Joining us now is Vijay Shekhar Sharma, founder of Paytm, joining us all the way from Toronto. Vijay, I appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. I want to pick up on your latest tweet, Vijay. You said, we must not let people with large distribution get favor or get away with their evil business practices that choke industry and not just choke Indian companies. Why is Vijay Shekhar Sharma an angry young man today? Well, I think, um, first of all, I want to tell you that this is not related to me being angry young man today. This is about um, Indian companies continuously get uh, under-treated by same treatment which international companies won't get. For example, um, I'll not start with us as a case here. I'll start with the case of Make My Trip and Booking.com. If you book a hotel on Booking.com, you give your yeah. credit card, they take the credit card and share it with someone else, some hotel. But if you book it on Make My Trip, they cannot share because it is legally not allowed in India. Outsider player like Booking.com can play the business in a different way than a domestic business can play. And Deep has been cribbing about it, asking about it, and suggesting about it. That there should be an equal level playing field in the country. No, but... I'll but, give you another example now. But Vijay, I, Vijay, if I may interrupt you, 
if, if I may interrupt you on, on the limited point that you're making about uh, providing a level playing field, then surely you cannot rest the blame at the door of a Google or a WhatsApp. Surely the blame has to rest then with the Indian regulator and the Indian regulations. Absolutely. I'm just trying to tell you that it is uh, WhatsApp. So first of all, I want to put something on the context here because I think a lot of people are calling it uh, India versus a foreign company debate. It is absolutely not. The problem is, okay. now let's talk about the problem. Okay. So tell, tell me an example of an app which hmm. is using UPI and you don't even have a login and password. You talk about ICSA, you talk about SBI, you talk about phone pay, you talk about PTM. Everybody in this country has a three-factor authentication. I'm sure you know that. Login, password, and then the UPI pin. And here yes. the app goes, without any login password, you can just put the pin and then your money transfer happening. Voila, that is not, not, not just a violation. Hmm. This is a bigger security threat to the country. We all talk about cyber safety in this country. Okay. We all talk about gullible Indians who can be compromised for their bank accounts and digitization. And here is a here is a champion app yeah. which is not even having a login and password and doing money transfer directly from your bank account. I do not know what kind of security bomb okay. is so, allowed so to run it. No, no. One second, one second. You're raising two very different issues. You're raising one, a security issue, because you're saying that there is no three-factor authentication that is the norm that is prescribed for other payment uh, players. But the question I ask you again, Vijay, uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp has been allowed to do this. There is someone who has allowed them to go forward with this. It brings back the question of how the NPCI is operating, and hence the question should be raised to the NPCI, not to WhatsApp. Totally. WhatsApp can play business tactics like this. Mark Zuckerberg is known to play cheap business tactics in past also. He can play it out and we are letting it play it out with. Yes, you're right. My question is that how are we as Indians letting some third world country, third party companies that are coming from all the way from the West to get a special favor from NPCI? You're right. I think this conversation is not about what WhatsApp mm. is doing, but it is about what WhatsApp can get away with. Let me let me again interrupt you because you know your first tweet that you put out, which was uh, yesterday, I think, when you said uh, that after failing to win the war against India's open internet with cheap tricks of free basics, Facebook is again in play, killing the beautiful open UPI system. Uh, but the fact of the matter, Vijay, is that UPI has not been an open system. Is that not a fact? Well, Suddenly you well, choose well, to well, conveniently well, ignore the fact that there has been criticism. In fact, the Vatel committee appointed by the government very categorically stated that the UPI was not a neutral infrastructure provider. Totally. And I want to put it on the table first, that as a statement. I hear, as Mega was saying a few minutes back, that uh, wallet companies felt that this is not equal to them. And the conversation that we had made us understood that uh, the UPI ecosystem was connected to KYC account. And that is why wallet companies are now asked to complete the KYC and the uh, February is a new deadline, as you know, of, and post that UPI will come to the wallets also. So by the way, as neutral as it can get, as neutral it doesn't get get. The question and the point I'm trying to raise here is that whatever the neutrality is and whatever the rule of the games are defined by UPI, whether it includes wallet today or whether it includes wallet tomorrow, yeah. the point is if today's rules are ABC, they are not being followed as ABC to company A and company B. The question is that how are we as countrymen okay. are letting this happen to another company which is totally known to be one of the most evil companies in the world. I, I'm surprised. I mean, uh, it, is, it, is, it is not a question of whether... You, you... You're calling Facebook and WhatsApp an evil company? This is the, You're I, calling I, Facebook I, and WhatsApp an evil company, Vijay Shekhar Sharma? I'm not calling them evil company. I'm calling them the most evil company. The Facebook is one of the most evil companies in the world right now. I do not know one geography that admires them as a great company. Okay. We, are, we, are, we are opening our banking system to the biggest of possible fraud by giving it single factor authentication in the hands of 200 million people. I'm surprised okay. that it is being let down, let happen in this country. And then that system, which is a locked closed system, locked closed system where customer has an obligation to sign up first, only then they can do something. And, and a customer can only send money to their own ecosystem, not even an outsider. There is no way you can do money transfer to a bank account mm. beyond WhatsApp account. That's that's like, yeah. I mean, it's it's an open yeah. violation of whatever the intention UPI has. I'm not the judge here whether UPI is open or closed. My question here is, when we were implementing UPI, and Shireen, I want to... But that's a, a, now, I want to give you a, yeah. one other really interesting anecdote that may be not publicly known yet. We were launching as KTM mm -hmm. UPI before Diwali. 
and that is the time Google Tage was being launched. We were asked to stop launching and mm. delay the launch of Paytm UPI because Google has launched and to launch it. So that you know this. I mean, I am not sure. I want, no, no, one second. You were asked by whom? NPCI, who, who asked you to NPCI, delay your launch uh, NPCI, so that Google Google could launch? NPCI asked us. To NPCI asked later. you to delay your launch so that Google could launch. Hundred percent. That's on the record that they sent us. And not just this, they took an undertaking from us. In, in, a, in those words, in the, I, no, sorry, I'm laboring on this, Vijay, but in those words, the NPCI asked you to hold back the launch of Paytm UPI so that Google could go first? As Google could go first, Google could scale first, Google could stabilize the service, and Paytm couldn't even launch the service. You know, pre-Diwali service got launched in January purely because Diwali traffic and the post facto compliance, etc., etc., made us delay the traffic launch by three months. We today are the largest UPI user, and we are called that we are the number two players in this space, while we were the first player ready with the product out there in the market. But Vijay, Vijay, didn't you didn't you push back when when you were asked to delay? Uh, you say because of Google's so launch, didn't you push back when you tried to push back? I would imagine. What was the response from the NPCI? We are good friends with NPCI. NPCI says that I think it is better that you launch a post facto. They are going through a traffic, so they should ramp up. You know, that's fine. The problem is now the first dot and second dots are joining. That it is a pattern. That is why I'm speaking now. What is this pattern that you're talking about, Vijay? The rule book, which is written out there, gets interpreted and modified for other players in a different way than us. I give you an example here. Yesterday, I had a conversation yeah. with gentleman in NPCI, and I was asking, how did you let the login and password go away? He said there was a circular about it. And the circular says, if banks can okay. undertake the liability, you can take away the two-factor authentication that is before the third-factor authentication is. Now, just help me. Who, who issued the circular, Vijay? NPCI, who has issued? NPCI, who has issued the NPCI circular? NPCI when was the circular issued, and who has issued it? NPCI issued the circular, which is on the website already. And I, I, I and I'm trying to say this. Okay. Are you suggesting that a third, three-factor authentication, which is considered as a India's one of the best innovation in the world, even though it delays the process and it stops a lot of drops happens, but that has been the reason that the amount of fraud in India are so less. Is just by an under undertaking by four different banks was allowed to go away for WhatsApp. Wow. I mean, wow is the word that I can say. I mean, uh, tell me another UPI app which yeah. has no login and password in this country. You can say that, oh, undertaking has been given by banks, but that is exactly what I'm saying. Closed door negotiations and agreements are allowed to happen here. That is why my grudge is. Okay, so you're saying closed-door negotiations happen with the NPCI. And which I also want to point out, uh, you know, in response to the fact that you tweeted saying that UPI is this big open garden and now because WhatsApp Pay has come in, it's becoming this closed garden. But several people have raised questions about the manner in which the NPCI operates. As I pointed out, and I'm alluding to the recommendations of the Vatal Committee report, uh, by the way, the deadline for which I'm told by Nikhil Pava, the implementation deadline, has already expired. Now, will you make the case for those recommendations which call for a diffuse shareholding of NPCI, which call for the shareholding to include all classes of payment service providers? These were the specific recommendations. Will you now push the government to move forward on this? I mean, we've gone ahead, we've gone to NPCI and asked for our shareholding, potential shareholding. We are a bank, so potential contribution, potential part of those committees. Not we may be the largest UPI bank in the country, but we don't have a say yet. I mean, Wattle Committee is a classic example of things that... What was the response? What was the response? Not yet. What was the response Not... when you asked for a say? Not yet. Not yet. Let, let me end then by asking you, what is your message to the NPCI through this program? Well, this message is to not NPCI only. This is a message to our internet ecosystem in this country. The first and foremost, Please stop labeling everything as the India versus foreign. It is absolutely no way. The reality of India is that India will have four or five ecosystems and it will have significant amount of... Facebook owned WhatsApp quietly launched the person to person payments feature called WhatsApp Pay. This new feature lets you send money to your contacts bank account directly from your own linked bank account. So essentially, this is not a wallet. The transfer is done via Unified Payments Interface or UPI. This new payment feature 
by the largest messenger service in India has ruffled a few feathers, notably that of Paytm boss Vijay Shekhar Sharma. Here's his grouse. WhatsApp has made UPI into a closed or a walled payments garden in India. At this point, let me bring in Bipin Preet Singh, founder and CEO of MobiQuick and Nikhil Power, founder of Mediadama.com. So here are the big questions. Now for all players who have been using UPI so far, have had to comply with these norms. So as compared to other apps, WhatsApp had it easy. Nikhil, let me start with you. What's your take on that? Well, uh, I think so. the way WhatsApp has launched it, it's in a beta stage right now, but they have uh, largely enabled WhatsApp to WhatsApp payments. The ability to pay other people, I mean, other, other UPI IDs uh, is actually separate and it's very difficult to get to it. It's not a walled garden, but it's kind of close to that right now. Uh, but, you know, this is something which we've seen from UPI in the past from the NPCI, where whenever a new player comes on to UPI, they're given some sort of a carrot, some sort of a preferential treatment where some features are allowed. So even when Google Tays launched, yes. they launched with multiple processing yes. partners, whereas no one before them had that opportunity. Yes, so I think a, that's a good point. We, we yes. have to be conscious of, of the governance at NPCI here because it's not an open, UPI is not an open platform. Right, so that's what you and in fact Bipin have been saying that UPI was never meant to be an open platform and let me bring in Bipin here. Uh, so do you think that NPCI has carved out loopholes, something that even Nikhil pointed out, right? I don't think so. I think, you know, uh, the changes or the restrictions that we are talking about here uh, are non-material. Why I say they are non-material is because hmm. if you are uh, using WhatsApp in India and if you want to send money to somebody hmm. else, uh, it's very, very likely, probably 99% likely that that person is also on WhatsApp. So I don't understand, you know, hmm. why there is such a big need for even if the protocol wants it or desires it for interoperability, WhatsApp in itself is so huge that, you know, if you do P2P on WhatsApp, it's likely that the other person on the receiving side is going to be on WhatsApp. So that's my specific point on this. Hmm. But my larger point is that uh, is the same uh, that you know NPCI and WhatsApp are have worked together to create an experience which is best for the consumer yeah. and hopefully will lead to a lot of adoption of UPI and there, thereby adoption of digital payments. Um, so I do not understand who is losing out okay. here mm. uh, and you know we have not followed a closed ecosystem uh, policy in this country and we want uh, to let a thousand flowers bloom. I have a disagreement there because I don't see UPI as an open platform. In an open platform with an open API, the same features are made available to everybody exactly. at the same time. Let's also not forget that hmm. companies like Bipins are not being allowed on UPI. Yeah, Wallets are not wallet. allowed. Yeah. And I don't understand why. Two years ago, when when I when when we, when uh, when we'd spoken mm. with the, with the uh, head of uh, NPCI then, he said that they don't want to allow wallets in at that point in time because banks need a bit of a head start. Right. How much so, more of a head start do they need? Why aren't they allowing so wallets on the, the platform? So you think the fundamentals are being compromised here, Nikhil? In it's, a way, especially when we spoke about interoperability. No, this is, this uh, is not the, fair are market the fundamentals operations. being compromised by for UPI when it comes to UPI and WhatsApp's ad adoption of UPI here. This, these are not fair market operations. Hmm. That's, it's as simple as that. Everyone hmm. needs to get the same opportunity. Whether it's a, wallet comp it's a wallet or a bank, they're all payments businesses and they all need to have the same opportunity on UPI as the other. Okay. Right now, that's not the case. Every new player on UPI gets some amount of preferential treatment. That's also not the right approach. Let everybody come and fight on a level playing field. Hmm. That's not being given to these guys. So, Bipin, do you think like uh, global tech giants like Google and Facebook are getting a leg up when it comes to capturing the larger piece of the first time India internet uh, users? Are you on the same page as Nikhil? Uh, no, I, I don't agree with it. I think if the argument is being made that uh, NPCI was not open to other startups, etc. So I have not seen evidence of that. I have not. I have we have interacted with uh, NPCI. In my view, in our interaction, NPCI. at least hmm. they have been very, very supportive. Uh, as, as and when you know, MobiQuick wants okay. to uh, go ahead with UPI, uh, it can go ahead. So I can't speak for others, and I can't speak for NPCI. But that's not the view I share. And the other point being, tech giants. Why? Why does NPCI want to get Google or WhatsApp? Uh, onto this and let's say even if they are mm. making concession what is the larger goal here you know the larger goal is that you are setting up trying to set up a system which people. allows payments directly from one one bank account to another bank account and make it seamless and it is fundamentally superior 
uh, we have to accept it compared to the methods yeah. that we have had in the okay. past. Some companies will die, some companies will adapt, some companies will find other wa other ways to compete. Uh, but I think if a larger but consumer But are those some companies just the smaller today, companies? Which, which that's, the, that's the question. The some companies that are going to it's die the nature are of, those no, the it's smaller the nature of youth, companies. Uh, the question that I will ask, no, no, Omega. I will. We are a smaller company. The question I will ask then: Why, why, why do some of the companies, and I am talking about companies right now which are complaining, go out and try to solve, uh, get exclusive deals with public utility companies to lock out other mm -hmm. payment players? Is that an interoperable and open, six, open ecosystem for acceptance of payments or payment system? The answer is no. We have made peace with it. Uh, if it's a public good, mm -hmm. you know, if it has to be declared as mm -hmm. such and it has to be made open. But if it is not a public good, then we have no okay. reason to complain. All right, that's clearly someone who's made uh, peace with uh, you know, NPCI's way of functioning. Thank you so much, Vipin and Nikhil, for joining us on CNBC TV 18 for this conversation. Thanks a lot. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks.